Hey everyone, welcome back to Body Haven Soaps. Today we are going to go over how I make my bath bombs. Um, today I'm making one of my Halloween bath bombs that will go through. So I've picked up these little cauldron pots at the Dollar Tree and this is what we will be making our bath bombs in. Uh, the bath bomb recipe that I will share with you today is my base recipe that I do for all of my bath bombs. Uh, I do change a few things depending on the bath bomb I'm making as far as the oil that I will use in it. Um, sometimes I'll use hemp oil, sometimes I'll use the sweet almond oil, um, avocado oil. So it will just depend on that but I, I just exchange those for the same as long as it's a light oil. Um, and that type of stuff. So we will go through that and uh, make these little cauldron bath bombs. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, um, you can do this by hand. You don't have to have a mixer. I am going to use um, my stand mixer today. Um, it does incorporate things a little bit better. Um, however, you don't have to do this. You can do it with your hand. That's fine. Okay, if you don't have a mixer. All right, so first of all, um, what we're going to do is we're going to bloom our baking soda. Okay, so inside our mixing bowl, I'm going to put in my baking soda, and the amount of baking soda I use in my base recipe is going to be 47 ounces of baking soda. Okay, so we want to put that baking soda in first. So 47 ounces of baking soda this out of our way for now okay and we're going to bloom this now when you're making bo bath bombs it's kind of important that you allow the baking soda to bloom that is uh, going to help this adhesion process um, quite a bit um, and allow that to bind a little better for you so what we're going to do is I'm going to put in distilled water Okay, and I'm going to put in just maybe uh, two milliliters. You don't want to put a lot in there because we don't want it to activate, but enough to allow your baking soda to bloom a little bit. I find this helps me out um, quite a bit with the binding and preventing cracking and crumbling of my bath bombs. So we're going to put this on and we're just going to allow that little bit of water to allow that baking soda to bloom. Okay. Um, another thing worth mentioning, um, the humidity in your room when you do bath bombs. Um, sometimes with bath bombs you get those little white dots on it from the citric acid to expanding and stuff or they get really brittle and crumbly. That is because of the humidity. It's either too dry or too moist in the room. So controlling the humidity, right now because I'm videotaping, I do not have my dehumidifier running, but I did run it inside my soap room um, all morning before making this video. So I've got a fairly good temperature in here. Right now we're in a very moist season um, in British Columbia. So we're getting a lot of rain. We even got some snow last weekend. Um, so the humidity is quite high, so that can be a problem for bath bombs. Um, another, during the summer when we were so hot and dry, um, it, I had to add more water uh, and not run my dehumidifier. So it's really going to depend on the humidity. Um, right around 39, 40 humidity, percent humidity is perfect for bath bomb making. So if you get a dehumidifier, that works really well and it makes a huge difference when you're making bath bombs. Alright, so we're just going to turn this on and allow this to bloom. So you're going to let this run you guys for maybe, I don't know, two, three minutes and we're just going to let it run. So I'll just speed this up and let this bloom. Now we want to add in um, the rest of our ingredients, okay? So cream of tartar, all right? And for cream of tartar, you're gonna need two ounces of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is going to be what allows that bath bomb to harden um, and hold its shape, whether you're pressing it into a vacuum mold or you're pressing it into your bath bomb um, press, whatever you're using, even if you're doing hand, you need the cream of tartar in there. So there's two ounces of cream of tartar. 
okay? And then we have our SLSA. Now, with the SLSA, you guys, this is a, a mild surfactant, okay? And it's going to cause the foamy bubblies in the bath bomb. Um, make sure you don't use too much of this because if you get too much, you're just going to get this foaming mess on top and it's not going to spread out through the bath. Um, another thing that I do is I use the coarse SLSA. I do not use the fine powder. I find that the coarse works better. I get my coarse SLSA um, from Soap and More out of Alberta. It, the, it's a fairly reasonable price and that is what I use. So I use a coarse L SLSA, not the powder form, but you can use the powder form in here. I would just cut back how much you're using if you're using the powder form, but I use 1.2 ounces of SLA, coarse SLA, SLSA, okay? All right, so that is our surfactant in there. And then we have our clan and clay, um, and this just adds some silky feel to the water in the bath bomb, um, and, it, and it helps uh, with the skin, and it also does help uh, harden this up. So we are going to put in, um, 0.5, so we're going to put in half an ounce of clan and clay. Okay, so that is all of our powders, um, except for our citric acid. Our citric acid will go in at the very end, okay? So that is our baking soda, 47 ounces, cream of tartar, 2 ounces, SLSA coarse SLSA, 1.2 ounces, and then our clan and clay, we have half an ounce, okay? Now, I'm just gonna give this a quick blend. I don't wanna get it too much because I don't want powder everywhere, but just to blend it up so nothing clumps. All right, now, we are going to add in polysorbate 80. Now, polysorbate 80, because I am using I'm using water soluble dyes in my bath bombs. You can use micas and that um, in your bath bombs, that's fine. I prefer the water soluble dye um, just because it's less likely to stay in the tub and um, it disperses in the water a little better. However, you can use mica. Um, when we're using colorants, we use the polysorbate to disperse the color. Um, and so it doesn't stay in the tub. We also use it because I'm going to put in some shea and some sweet almond oil in this recipe. So this allows the oil and the water to bind, blend together so that we don't have that slippery surface and we don't have oil floating on top of the surface. It allows the water and the oil to blend, mix together to emulsify, okay? So we are going to put in a quarter of an ounce, so 0.25, ounces of the polysorbate 80. Okay, and then we are going to put in our oils. Now we are going to put in 0 0.20 ounces of shea butter. Shea is really good on the skin, but we don't want it too heavy in there because uh, we don't want that slippery surface and we don't want this to be all crumbly and not stick together. So we are putting in 0 0.20 ounces, okay, of shea and I have that melted in here. And then we are going to put in our sweet almond oil, which is going to be fifth, uh, sorry, um, 0 0.40. Okay, so 0 0.40 ounces of any light oil you want. In this recipe, I'm using sweet almond oil. Um, other recipes, depending on the, the bath bomb I'm making, um, I have a hemp bath bomb collection I'll use hemp oil in. Um, I have avocado oil that I use. You can use any kind of light oil that you want, okay? But that is going to be 0.40. Okay, so it's whatever properties you're bringing to that bath bomb, that's the kind of oil that you're going to use, okay? So we're going to get that in there. So we've melted that shea butter down and light almond oil. Okay, 
And then at this time, I'm going to put my fragrance oil in as well. And I am going to use um, sugar plum, actually. And this, I love the smell of sugar plum. And it's a really kid-friendly scent. Um, so that is what I am using. And I am going to put in 0 0.80 ounces. Okay, so 0 0.80 ounces of your choice of fragrance oil. And we're just going to pour that oil in. All right, and we're gonna let this blend really well. So about two or three minutes, we're gonna let this blend and I will just speed the video up through this process. Blend for two or three minutes, I mean, what you're looking for is this type of consistency. So as you can see, it's it's very powdery and sticking together, but it kind of looks like a cookie crumb kind of texture for a cookie dough. Um, and it's just kind of crumbly, and it will stick together if you squeeze it, but it breaks apart really easy. You're looking for it to be blended well like that. Okay. Now we will add in our last ingredient uh, for our powder ingredients, which is going to be our citric acid. And you're going to put in 31 ounces of citric acid. Okay, so get all of that in there. And then we will blend this. Now I haven't added color yet because I'm going to do two different colors. Um, if you were going to add in and just do one color, um, you could do that before you put in your citric acid, that would be the best because when we add it afterwards you will get some fizzing and you're going to lose some of that citric acid um, fizzing action. So you would want to put that in prior to your citric acid, however, um, because I'm doing two different colors out of this one batch, I'm going to add it in separate after. So we're just going to quickly blend this um, just to incorporate the citric acid in. And now I'm going to divide this up. So I'm going to use the two containers that I had. So I two different colors. I'm going to divide this uh, mix between these two containers. Don't need perfectly equal amounts, but close. Okay. Okay, so divide it between two. We're going to dump one back in here and start with our color. Now, I am going to, I am using for coloring my liquid uh, watercolors. Now, I got these from Breaking the Mold. Um, these are new water soluble dyes. I've not tried the brand before, so this is the first time I'm trying it. But I am using ex emerald sea foam green, okay, and blue realm, all right, from breaking the mold. So let's start with the blue first. And all I've done is I've heated up a little bit of water, you guys, um, and I've put the water soluble dye in there to the color that I would like and um, I've allowed that water soluble dye to bloom, okay? And I will use my little dropper and I will put the color in here. Now I'm gonna move the camera here so hopefully you guys. So while we're putting that color in there, you guys, we want to, well, while we're putting the color in here, um, we want to do it while it's running. If I just put this water with the soluble dye in there, um, we're going to get a lot of fizzing in one action. So I'm actually going to do it while this is on so that it mixes very quickly and I lose less of my citric acid uh, reaction. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this on and you guys can just see how I do this.
Okay, so now that I got that in there, you can see this is packing and kind of crumbly apart. If you want and you need to, and you're going to have to make bath bombs to get used to the texture you want. Um, and if you want it to be a little firmer than that, you're going to want to put rubbing alcohol in there, no more water, because uh, the water will create this um, fizzing action and we'll lose our bath bomb property. So what we want to do now, uh, because I want this a little bit more packable, um, I'm going to put in just some of my 99% rubbing alcohol um, because that evaporates and it will not allow that. You can use um, the witch hazel. I don't really care for witch hazel myself, but I use um, this rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to put a little bit in. And if you guys start pressing your bath bombs together and it doesn't quite work, um, you can absolutely just put it back on the mixer or pour some in, mix it with your hand, and add some rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to put in um, just a little splash because I want this a little bit thicker. But as you can see, that is not making um, my batter foam at all. Okay, so now we have this one done. I'm just going to um, pour it into here, okay, and then do my green one. I did the lightest color first. And if I need more rubbing alcohol, I can just stir that in by hand after. So lightest color is done. We will move on to our darker color. And I don't wash in between, it's okay, that little bit of blue is not going to make a huge difference. That's why we did the lightest color first. And then exactly the same thing, I have the emerald green sea foam um, already... Um, bloomed the liquid color and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the blue. And that is it. I'm not going to add any rubbing alcohol to this one because I had to add more water. I'm just going to move my camera here so you guys can see hopefully a little bit better. So move the mixer out of our way. And I have that nice green color I was looking for. And we'll simply get our little molds. Now this is pretty easy to do you guys. Um, I've also made a couple, this is just, um, Himalayan salts that I have covered in mica powder. Um, I have done a blue and I have done a green, okay, that I will put on top of this. So let's start with the green one. Um, so basically all you're going to do, you guys, I don't know if you guys can see, but we just want to put it in there and pack it down. You want to pack it so that it doesn't just fizz automatically when you put it in the tub. Um, you want them to have a longer fizzing experience, so to say. So still make sure you're packing it down. Now these will not dry as quick because I am putting them into containers. Okay, so I'll make sure I have my dehumidifier on. I'm going to leave these for 48 hours rather than 24 hours um, to make sure once I package them that there is no moisture left in there. All right, so I just fill them up. Like so. And I fill them right up. You guys, these aren't that big. like so. 
Let's see how many ounces this is. So, if I take an empty one, zero it out. Okay, so that works out to six ounces. Okay, so we've got a six ounce bath bomb here. All right, so I'm just going to continue to fill these up and then I will show you how I do the topping. I now have these all pressed okay so I have the green and I have the blue okay um, and I'm going to use my coated salts and I'm going to put them on top and press them down So pretty simple and you guys, you could make eyeballs to put in here, you could, your options are kind of endless. Now obviously these are not going to stay stuck down, now I will package and heat shrink them so they will. Um, another option that you could do with these salts um, is after your bath bomb cured, I wouldn't do it before the curing process, the drying process, so to say, has been done. Um, but you can take melt and pour, clear melt and pour, and just drizzle a little bit over the very top just to hold these in place if that's something that you are looking for. Okay. With me shrink wrapping them, I'm not going to do that, I don't think. Um, but I have done that in the past with my pots of gold. Um, at St. Patrick's Day, I do my bath bombs the same way in these little cauldrons. Um, for that.
and then I'm just going to let these sit and um, allow them for 20, uh, 48 hours, sorry, and then I will take um, a cloth and clean up the outside so these look tidy and nice because you can see I've got mica and stuff all over them so I'll tidy them up. Um, I will put this in shrink wrap and then my label goes around the front and I'll put a little Halloween thing um, images on my labeling to bring this product up a little bit rather than just a black cauldron. Uh, my label will have a bubbling cauldron and stuff um, image right on the labeling. Okay, so that is how I make my bath bombs. Um, the recipe is provided for you throughout the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. The, the creativity, you could do um, round sugar balls uh, like this. You could get white ones or blue or green. They got all kinds of different ones like that. Um, just make sure when you're adding any of those types of things, this is sugar balls. So, I mean, you just need to make sure that's on your labeling, okay? Um, you could make miniature little eyeball bath bombs that you put in the center of that. You could make uh, use soap dough and make uh, your own little creation that you put on top, a broomstick, a witch's hat, whatever you want. So the, the options are endless. Um, I'm just making a quick version here, not getting too fancy. Pretty simple to do. Um, Pretty simple to do and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video um, if you did just hit the like button uh, below that helps support my channel if you have any questions please answer them in the comments if there's any videos that you are wanting to see uh, put it in the comments below I am forming a list I have a number of videos um, that people have requested on my packaging on uh, my horsetail butter I'll go over how I make infused oils those types of things people want to see those videos so they are on my list of things to do um, and if there's anything that you would like to see just post it down below all right thank you have a great day